the people that are listening that want to go from zero, I don't have a podcast, to 50, I'm now a semi competent podcaster, like that's great. There are resources out there. I'm interested in talking to the people that want to go from 90 to 95 or from like 95 to 100. One of the main things that I wanted to talk with you about today is just the art of the podcast interview. Um, because I think you have a lot of value to add there based on what you said in terms of the energy and the time that you're devoting, you know, you're hiring coaches, you're thinking about this stuff constantly. How can I continually improve and not cringe when I listen back? You know, it might be the case that you always cringe when you listen back mm -hmm. to your old interviews and that's a good thing because it shows that you're continually improving. Uh, but you've said that, you know, to record a truly excellent interview, you need to be able to ride the crest of the now you know, rather than reading off a big list of, of scripted questions. And just to be honest with you, like, I find that terrifying because, you know, I like to be able to prepare and control and have, like, you know, I don't like stepping into the unknown in an interview. And obviously, you do need to do some prep for interviews. You can't just rock up and go, right, we're just going to wing it and, and see what happens. But how do you strike that balance, like, of getting the right amount of prep but also letting the conversation flow naturally? It's a really good question, man. Like this is, for me, I, the people that are listening that want to go from zero, I don't have a podcast, to 50, I'm now a semi-competent podcaster. Like that's great. There are resources out there. I'm interested in talking to the people that want to go from 90 to 95 or from like 95 to 100. And this is one of the things that I think around about maybe the 80, 80th percentile, like 90th percentile people really start to dig into this balance between structure and free flow. Um, for me personally, I, I actually think I've probably started to over prepare, um, a little bit too much, uh, within the last year. That's been a function of having a lot of people on the show that I don't specifically know what they're talking about. So if I'm introduced to behavioral genetics by Robert Plowman, like the guys studied 20,000 twins in the most clinically de detailed twins and adoption study in history. And I'm new to the, to the topic. I, 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 I feel like I need more of a support structure but a lot of the time I get into the show and I'm actually like, nah, like I don't, I don't need that. I don't actually need it. Um, so I'm, I went through, a, a, because it was constant, three episodes a week, most of them about books, a lot of those about scientific communication on a huge variety of topics with very little crossover. Um, it, I basically had a lot of the time, like a day and a half to learn an entire body of work. So with that, I, I felt like I needed more of a support structure. I'm actually now dialing that back and I'm purposefully reducing the amount of notes that I take into an episode. And I am just going to find whatever's optimal for me with that. But yeah, I think overall, you know, if you are in, if you're a competent podcaster and you're looking to really sort of double this down, just play around with it. The same way as you might play around with different tactics in a sports game. And I often think of it like this, like no sports team in history has gone out on the field without a some plays in their pocket but a lot more teams are able to free flow than others and just because this game today maybe ended up you know maybe you didn't perform quite so well but maybe that's because you tried to stick to a really rigid set of rules and then you learn from it and you're like okay that's too much that's way mm -hmm. too much like i'm trying to read read all of these questions off or yeah. you do the converse and you're like i didn't know what i was talking about and i got lost and i floundered <laughs> around like that's also that's that's not enough and you find your sweet spot between it. Um, my number one piece of advice, really, I, I still now, I hate the intro to a podcast. It's always weird. It's always awkward, especially if you record a pre-recorded pre-roll. So if you do the foreplay for the episode off camera and then you meet the guest and you spend five minutes with them going like, hey, mate, here am I, random human from the internet that's going to talk to you about this thing <laughs> and I need you to be comfortable with me. And you try and make some shit jokes or whatever and like get them to like open up a little bit. And then you're like, three, two, one, Robert Plowman, welcome to the show. And then you're in and you're like, fuck. So I always have, the first thing that I say is always uh, written out. The first question that I have is almost always written out, unless it's a very good friend. So if it's a Michael Malice or if it's a Johnny and Youssef, like my, my buddies, um, I'm sweet. I can just say like, what are you wearing that for? Or what have you been doing today? Or whatever comes to mind. But just getting yourself into that um, is a good part of conversation craft. I would also... I think it's a good idea to give the guest room to breathe. So, and this is something that I've only learned since being a guest on more shows that, um, have you ever seen someone do a, a, a 2k time trial on a ski erg, uh, on a, a rowing, a, a rowing erg? 
So the way that they actually start the momentum off is they do a bunch of little fast strokes. So they like pull, 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 pull. Like it's like this sort of cadence where they build up to the long ones. And I actually think that, you know, a couple of kind of like dumb back and forth questions and then a big fat one that the guests can sink their teeth into about two minutes in, like let them speak, let them stop, let them speak, let them stop. And then just let them go with like, so Robert, let's say that no one's, somebody that's listening has never heard of behavioral genetics before. Like, How do you describe what behavioral genetics is? It doesn't have to be that basic. It can still, it can be something really complex. That's a really like kind of a bit of a cringe, like open because it's just so obvious, but just give the guest like something because they're nervous as well. And even if they're super confident, they just, you just want to get them into the flow. My vocal coach told me about this. You know, you want to get their larynx moving up and down. You want to get their facial muscles moving nicely. And that's when after a little while you can get like bang, 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 bang. Like you can start to move more quickly backward and forward. But you don't want to do that straight off the bat, I don't think. Um, so yeah, that's that's some things, man. Like bit of structure, work out what works for you. Give the guests like something easy to get started on. Maybe have a little bit of a back and forth in the beginning and then just give them room to breathe. And then you can start to come back in. And mm. then you can start to have a discussion. 